Well, good morning to you again. Um, Pastor Carter's not here this morning, obviously, and he has asked Brother Chris Gillian to bring the message to us this morning. So, Brother Chris, you feel free to adjust this microphone any way you like to. Okay. All right, good morning. I'd like for you to turn to Proverbs chapter 12, That's where we'll go to this morning. Pastor Carter makes it look very easy. It's not nostalgia morning. There are the throwback for me because I am half the age of Pastor Carter. So if you're good at math, you can figure out how old I am. <clears throat> and yes, I have a suntan on my face. I joked with my family. I says, uh, now you're getting a piece of the taste of what the Israelites got when Moses showed up with them after he went on the mountain. <laughs> I was in the presence of the sun, but not the S-O-N, the S-U-N. I was talking with a gentleman. didn't seem like we talked very long, but it was a, it was a very, very great talk. I ask you to bear with me a little bit. But we're going to get through it. Amen. All right. So, I don't want to take this passage out of context. The passage that we're going to be looking at is talking about labor. It's a law of labor. But through it, there's a spiritual aspect that we can pull out of it and apply it to our daily life. We need to prepare ourselves when we come to Sunday school. We need to prepare ourselves before we come to church. All right? We expect the pastor, the teachers, we expect them to be studied up and ready to bring a word. And there can be times when some people may have a standard of their own of whether the pastor or the teacher has studied or prepared to meet their standard. But that's not the standard. I'm not the standard. We're not the standard. The standard is Jesus Christ. Amen. So I'll read some verses here. We'll, we'll start reading in verse 1 to kind of get us going. Probably read about 15 verses if you can withstand that much. And then I'll get back to the verse of where we're going to go. It says in uh, chapter 12 of Proverbs, Whoso loveth instruction loveth knowledge, but he that hateth reproof is brutish. A good man obtaineth favor of the Lord, but a man of wicked devices will he condemn. A man shall not be established by wickedness, but the root of the righteous shall not be moved. A virtuous woman is a crown to her husband, but she that maketh ashamed is as rottenness in his bones. The thoughts of the righteous are right, but the counsels of the wicked are deceit. The words of the wicked are to lie and wait for blood, but the mouth of the upright shall deliver them. The wicked are overthrown and are not, but the house of the righteous shall stand. A man shall be commended according to his wisdom, but he that is of a perverse heart shall be despised. He that is despised and hath a servant is better than he that honoreth himself and lacketh bread. A righteous man regardeth the life of his beast, but the tender mercies of the wicked are cruel. He that tilleth his land shall be satisfied with bread, but he that followeth vain persons is void of understanding. The wicked desireth the net of evil men, but the root of the righteous yieldeth fruit. The wicked is snared by the transgression of his lips, but the just shall come out of trouble. A man shall be satisfied with good by the fruit of his mouth, and the recompense of a man's hand shall be rendered unto him. The way of a fool is right in his own eyes, but he that hearkeneth unto, why, unto counsel is wise. If you'll go back to verse 11, it talks about he that tilleth his land. And I'm sure many of us in here, we've done some farming work. Even though I'm 44, I've still done some farming work, quite a bit of it. We have roughly about, not quite 10 acres in the family property there. We, uh, there's been some houses put on there now, but my grandfather one time came up with this Wonderful idea to plant the entire field in peas. So you can only imagine what it was like. But think about this, the tilling process. 
What goes on in that tilling process? Well, we have to we have to cultivate the dirt. We've got to stir it up. We've got to break up the hard ground, right? We've got to we got to dig the roots out of there. We got to pull the grass out of there. It's it's not easy to get a garden started. We just can't go out here and throw some seed down and expect it to grow. All right. So there, uh, you've got to keep the weeds out of there. All right. I'm sure we know this because of the curse that was put on this earth them weeds will grow about three to four times faster than our food will <laughs> you put the fertilizer on the weeds you're making a mistake because your plants are going to be down here and your weeds are going to be up there I've seen it happen if I'm going to plant some new grass say I want to put some St. Augustine in my yard on top of some behay it ain't going to work out all right you got to go in there and you got to dig that old grass up we got to get it out of there we got to get it out of there so, to understand that part, you know, we're, we're, uh, tilling is an uh, operation, a practice, or an art of preparing land for seed and keeping the ground free from weeds which might grow in there, which might impede growth. We need to gain knowledge, okay? Not just, I'm, I'm not talking about gaining knowledge of how to grow things, but let's take this of planting. There's going to be a little bit of sowing and reaping in this too also, okay? But what we're looking at is, He that tilleth his land shall be satisfied with bread. But he that followeth vain persons is void of understanding. The first thing we need to get is some knowledge. Well, we've got to get saved, of course. A lost person can't cultivate the soil for, you know, for their life to grow. But their heart can be prepared by the Lord for the seed that we're going to plant on them. When we share the gospel with them, we give them the good news depend upon that soil and we'll get there in a little bit I'll try not to get ahead of myself it's kind of hard when you got all this going on here but if we was to go to Proverbs chapter 1 verse 7 it says and the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge so we have to have that fear and that's not a fear that we're scared to death of him that's two fears that's a reverential fear of what he can do and what he has done and then a fear to know that he can take my life when I mess up when I walk away from him Wisdom, you know, talk about gray hair. I cut mine last night so you couldn't see the highlights in there. And uh, it was getting a little long. It was touching my ears. So wisdom is the proper application of knowledge. Now, there's many people that has a lot of knowledge, but ain't got an ounce of wisdom. Wisdom, what is that? That's listening. That's knowing when to say something and when to just be quiet. It takes a little while to learn that, okay? Maybe that's why they say, you know, gray hair is a sign of wisdom. It could be a sign that you've learned a lot and you've struggled a lot with dealing with a lot of things in life, maybe. Thinking about knowledge there, Hosea, in Hosea chapter 4 and verse 6, God says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. I may be going to jump in my head ahead of myself on this here, but thinking about it like this. Listen, we can come here every single service that these doors is open. But if my heart is not prepared to receive the word, we're not going to get anything out of it. If we're coming here to put a check in the box, that's not what we're supposed to do. Hebrews 10 and 25 says, Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves as the manner of some is, this is left out many times, but exhorting one another. We come together to exhort. That means to lift up, to encourage. And, uh, and it says, And so much the more as we see the day approaching. You may hear people say, I don't know why y'all go to church so much. Uh, I'll be honest with you. I would rather be in church than sitting at the house because if I'm sitting at the house, somebody's knocking on the door wanting me to work on something. And, uh, you know, there is a time when a man needs a break, and uh, it can get uh, very tiring. Um, but we need to gain in knowledge, and the only way that we're going to grow in knowledge is by opening this word. I know we get upset sometimes. I mean, I've, I've heard many people complain, but I'm telling you right now, without this word here, I wouldn't be able to stand here in front of y'all. I'm just telling you. My words would be nothing but mumbo jumbo. We would, we would try and bring our own thoughts. And uh, 
And that's not what we want to do. We want to bring the thoughts to help each and every one of us grow and get closer to the Lord. And, you know, <clears throat> you often heard the old, the old saying where the preacher just plowed up my row. And that's what, that's what I want him to do to me. Every time they get in this pulpit, I want my garden to be in front. I know you want yours there, but I want mine to be in front. I want my road tilled first. I want him to plow it up. We always say he steps on my feet. Hey, that's, that's where I want to be. The Bible says in Psalms 119, 165, Great peace have they that love thy law. Here's the important part. And nothing shall offend them. Nothing. Think about that. As I get in this word and I allow this word to get in my heart and fester in my heart, I'll have great peace at whatever is going on. <laughs> we look around at everything that's going on in this world and we get so angry and we get so wound up. Think about it. If you'll study this word, these things must come to pass. We don't want it to happen on our watch. We, many of you have been here longer than I have. We don't want it to happen on our watch. I was a little kid. I've been a knucklehead all my life and just go along like a little snotty-nosed little kid kicking rocks and not paying attention. And now it's, you know, wake up, buddy. You're a man. <laughs> and it, it grieves me. And if we'll get in this word, the sin of this world will grieve you. Amen. You will not be happy with things that are going on. It will grieve your heart. You will, you will beg God to give you understanding why. Dig in the scriptures and he'll let us know. Still talking about this till in the land. If we would turn over to your right a little bit, Proverbs chapter 20. Proverbs chapter 20 and verse 4. Let's look at what it says here. It says, the sluggard will not plow by reason of the cold. Therefore shall he beg and harvest and have nothing. The lazy person ain't going to get out there and work. I have to work outside, in case you don't notice. Of course, I was mowing grass. I wasn't doing what I normally do. <laughs> but I'm outside all the time. And this past few weeks has been extremely hot for us. Uh, the, the men were up in the attic, and man, I've, I'm underneath my carport, and it's twice as hot up there. And I, and I just felt so sorry for them. But I had me two fans blowing on me, and it just it wasn't giving up. I, I thought I was back in Fort Irwin, California, doing my desert training when I was in the Army. That's about what it felt like for me on that Wednesday as I laid there and, and, and tried to continue on with the work that I was doing. But see, I had to make preparations for myself. See, if I wasn't lazy, if I was lazy, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have got things put in place to help me cool down. These men wouldn't have had things put in place so they could cool down as they're up there the best they could. We have to take time of our own to prepare. The sluggard's not going to do that. It says that he will not plow by because it's cold outside. Think about that. We complain when it's cold. We complain when it's hot. <laughs> I don't like the cold. I'll tell you that right now. I can deal with that heat. I can go find me a water hose and a shade tree. But you can't always find a fire where you're working at. The things that I do, if I have a fire there, everything's going to be on fire. And it's not going to be good because it'll be consumed. And then we won't have the thing to turn back to the people that they brought to me. <laughs> so we have to be careful with that. Turn on over there to Proverbs chapter 24. We're going to work our way to the back. <clears throat> I know I heard a preacher here recently say that you take an Old Testament lesson and get you a New Testament application. And that's where we're heading to. We just got to work our way there. <laughs> that was just recently in case y'all don't remember. I'm not saying I have a memory of steel, but there's just a, quite a few things that stick with me, that stick out. Uh, chapter 24, let's turn over there to verse 30. Read a few verses there and let's see what it says. It says, I went by the field of the slothful. That's a lazy person. And by the vineyard of the man void of understanding. Remember it says, if we follow a man that's void of understanding, that is, that is not, I mean, <clears throat> it says, but he that followeth vain persons is void of understanding. So this person is just what they're talking about. And it says, and lo, it was all grown over with thorns and nettles had grown, uh, uh, covered the face thereof and the stone wall thereof was broken down. 
Then I saw and considered it well. I looked upon it and received instruction. This young man received instructions from looking at a wall covered with vines because a lazy person didn't want to clean up. Look at what he learned. Yet a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to sleep. So shall thy poverty come as one that travaileth and that wanteth as an armed man. Listen, when we're lazy and we're not going to take care of things, our heart, our spirit, when we don't feed that with the good things, the psalmist says in uh, Psalms 101 and 3, I believe it is, I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I know this is a touchy subject, but our social media. <clears throat> Let me give you a scenario here. I've given this scenario a few times. And uh, we could all agree that there is some good stuff on social media. We could all agree on that. I'll agree with you. I'm biased. I don't like it at all, to be honest with you. Okay? But let me ask you something. Let's take a dumpster. Let's fill it full of garbage. And there's flies, maggots all around it. Now, we're going to go in the kitchen. You're going to go with me. We're going to fix a sandwich. We'll take a Ziploc bag. We're going to put it in that Ziploc bag. And we're going to go to the dumpster. We're going to pick up a couple of them bags and throw it in there. Close it back. We'll talk for a few minutes. Honestly, I would ask you if you'd grab it back. I would guarantee you there'd be nobody in this room. There would be nobody you talked to that would go get that sandwich. Now, there's nothing wrong with that sandwich. It's good. But look at all the garbage we have to sift through to get to the good stuff. Here, I'm going to tell you what. This is about the best thing we can put our face in. This is the best thing. I, I just, I don't have one because I know it'll control me. And if that's going to be the problem, I just stay away from it. All right? But that's, the, that's for me. That's social media, where I look at it as. And I, I hope nobody got offended by that. But if you love the law of God, just read you a verse, you, it won't bother you. <clears throat> Proverbs 24 talks about the slothful person there. In Hosea 10, he tells us to sow in mercy. Break up that fallow ground. Man, that's, if you was to study Hosea, that is a very interesting book. For those of y'all that was here at the Bible conference, Brother Gene Googe preached the message that Wednesday morning from Hosea chapter 4, verse 17. Ephraim is given to idols, let him alone. I couldn't stop thinking about that. So I had to go back and chase Ephraim from the very beginning to that point. And just all the things that I've seen was just so wonderful, so awesome, so amazing. Because you see how a loving, merciful God has been gracious. But he comes to a point where he says, I've had enough. Let him alone. We got to be careful. The things that we set before our face, things that we may let be an idol. There are so many things in this world that, that can do that. Let's go to our New Testament application here. Luke chapter 8. Many of you probably know where we're going. Luke chapter 8. You could read this same parable in Matthew 13, Mark 4. I would challenge you to go and look at it because there's some different aspects there of, of some information that's given. And uh, as I was going back over it this morning, I'm trying to decide... Okay, do we go to Matthew? Do we go to Mark? Do we go to Luke? Any, many? Man, but they're all good. Doesn't matter where you go, you can go to any of them. But if we'll go to Luke chapter 8, <clears throat> we'll read here the uh, parable of the sower and the seed. Remember, still thinking upon this thought process of tilling the land. All right? Tilling, use our heart and our minds as the land that needs to be tilled up. Because me and you have to go out there and we've got to work to get this mess out. We all have to go work in the world. We all have to be out there in the world and hear the different things. You know, uh, people want to try and crack these nasty jokes around you, but sometimes they, uh, they realize that you don't entertain them jokes. And I uh, just had one the other day. They, were, they started to, but they stopped. And they says, I can't even crack that joke with you. And I'm thinking, amen. <laughs> don't want to hear it anyways. Uh, so uh, just these past few days, I've just been sitting in the chair and just, just trying to read. And, um, I 
This is the only place we can get strength from. If you look at David's life all through the book of Psalms, he's constantly in a battle. Constantly. Luke chapter 8, verse uh, number 5 there, it says, A sower went out to sow, the seed, to sow his seed, and as he sowed, some fell by the wayside, and it was trodden down, and the fowls of the air devoured it. And some fell upon a rock, and as soon as it was sprung up, it withered away because it lacked moisture. And some fell among the thorns, and the thorns sprang up, with it and choked it out and other fell on good ground and sprang up and bare fruit and hundredfold and when he had uh, said these things he cried he that hath ears let him hear as I look around in here we all got ears I probably got the biggest ones in here I need a lot of hearing all right verse 9 and his disciples asked him saying what might this parable be and he said unto you, It is given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to others in parables. Look at this, that seeing they might not see, and hearing they might not they might not understand. So many times we want to physically touch the things that we believe in. Of course the Bible teaches it's all by faith. It's trusting. And many people want to say, Well, if I can't see it, I can't believe it. Well, the Bible tells us that he has prepared a place for us that eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither enter into the heart of man. The things that are prepared for us in heaven. We don't have a clue. <laughs> My dad passed away Tuesday. jealous he knows all the scripture now the message Sunday morning was for me rejoice that's what I was able to rejoice in and in here part of that rejoicing is the seed was planted obviously his soil was prepared and it received it. Let's go on and look and see what it says. Now the parable is this, verse 11. The seed is the word of God. Those by the wayside are they that hear. Then cometh the devil and taketh away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. They on the rock are they which, when they hear, receive the word with joy, and these have no root, which for a while believe and in time of temptation fall away. Oftentimes, these are the ones that get beat up because they made a profession and they're not faithful. Many times we put on our pharisaical suit and we go to them and uh, we try to encourage in the wrong direction where they need to be. And the best thing for us to do on that is to pray for them, love them, let them see the love. In Luke chapter 4, Jesus comes into the temple, opens the book, reads from Isaiah 61, gives the book back to the minister, and it says he sat down and the people wondered and marveled at the gracious words that proceeded out of his mouth. None of us are Jesus. <laughs> we should be like him. And we should have loving words to encourage those folks. Because Lord knows what happened with me if I would have failed. If I would, I wasn't faithful when I got saved. I'd be honest with you. I'd come to church Sunday morning. We'd go to the beach Sunday afternoon. Then the preaching of the word on Sunday mornings convicted me. And that's where I got faithful. Because I began to understand more. You get a person saved, they don't understand this Bible. <laughs> they read these parables, they'll be confused. They'll be going all different directions. And Lord knows if they get on YouTube, they're going to go all different directions. Heaven forbid that we get hung up on that because we can get tossed in different ways. Let me continue on here. 
It says, And that which fell among the thorns are they which when they uh, have heard go forth and are choked with the cares and riches and pleasures of this life and bring no fruit to perfection. So many times the cares of this world can take us away. It says, But that on the good ground are they which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, kept it, or keep it, and bring forth fruit with patience. Those that receive the word and truly understand it. See, we, we need to be ministers of the word to those that are around us. We need to be, as the Bible tells us, hearers of the word and not doers only. Here's an important part, Hebrews chapter 2. Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. For if the word spoken, listen to this, by angels, we go back to the conference title this past year, Steadfast, Unmovable. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast and every transgression and disobedience received a just re recompense of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? How is that going to work for us? We know over in James, he speaks to us. As uh, Brother Perkins just got through this here, this part just recently, James chapter 1, verse 22 says, But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. The Bible tells us to go. The Bible tells us to live our life. Oftentimes we've got some standards that we hold and we want to hold other people too. But Paul tells us in Philippians 1.27, this is one of my favorite verses. It says, only let your conversation be as it becometh the gospel of Jesus Christ. So take that verse there, burn it into our mind, and every time we get to a place where we're ready to tell this person how we feel, let's think about that. Is my conversation, is the places that I go, is the things that I do, is the things that I say, is there enough in that for, to lead someone to Christ? He tells us that if we don't do these things, we're deceiving our own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is likened unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass. It says, For he beholdeth himself and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was. We look in the mirror and we see ourselves. I looked in the mirror this morning and I was thinking, Lord, this is going to hurt. <laughs> I had to put a razor on this face. I've been treating this thing with lotion since Friday when I got home. And I'm thinking, Lord, have mercy. How am I going to cover this up? <laughs> I was telling my family, we're going to have to spray the rest of it up here to make me look right kind of unbalanced but I look in the mirror and I see the things that needs to be fixed just as Pastor Parsons has been teaching through the law in Romans I'm looking in the mirror I'm looking at me I'm the one needs to be fixed let's read that next verse it says but whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein he being not a forgetful hearer but a doer of the work I often thought that word said word, work. This man shall be blessed in his deeds. There's so many things that we, we've got to pay attention to in our life. The only way we can live this life, the only way we can get through is, listen, if we can't read the word of God, this was just shared with me. I, I just open up a little bit here. I've had conversations with many men. And it just so happens after that conversation, I'm faced with that scenario, but I've been given counsel. When you get to a point where you're struggling and you can't read the word, you need to put on some good, godly music. Let it minister to your heart. This gentleman shared with me, Saul and David. <laughs> I said, wow, I knew that, but didn't know it like that. Every time Saul's spirit would get stirred, David would play the harp and calm him down. Listen, there's times when we all get there, when we all get frustrated. Sometimes we've, we've, we've not tilled the land 
that when we've come into this place to let the Lord through the preacher of the word of God minister to our hearts and then when we walk out the door we often forget it we come down we'll pray about things but then we pick it back up and we take it with us we need to leave it there and let the Lord have his way with it a couple quick verses here and I'll be done uh, Galatians 6 says this let him that is taught in the nope wrong wrong verse it says be not deceived God is not mocked for whatsoever a man soweth that shall he also reap for he that soweth to his flesh Romans chapter 8 for he that soweth to his flesh of the flesh reap corruption but he that soweth to the spirit shall of the spirit reap life everlasting Psalms 120 Psalms 126 5 and 6 talking about going out sowing in tears reaping in joy let our hearts be ministered to let it let it let us I'm telling you the only way you can receive any message from a preacher it's not his business to get up Sunday morning and be prepared the only way the spirit can work in this place is if our hearts there's gonna be people come in that's lost and if I haven't prepared my spirit I may let this mouth say something that is not pleasing to God or encouraging to that person and that person can walk out them doors we never know we never know what is going on in someone's life we could say the wrong thing they leave out them doors and because I know the word of God and I know I'm right how many people could miss heaven because that young person that older person that was sent out them doors hurt and will never come back and will never adore the doors of a church again how many people could they have reached that's a thought we got to hold on to and that will help control our mouths I, I, listen I thank you for this opportunity I, I appreciate <laughs> the faith and trust that uh, the administration put in me to allow me to stand here and I'm, when Pastor Carter asked me I was I said can I pray about this he's like well, I don't know if it's too early it was right on time amen brother Smith alrighty total 814 for the day amen that's for you Amen. Well, we'll take about a 10-minute break, and we'll come back for the preaching services.